Good morning, dear students. Today we continue our journey into geometric modeling. This lecture does not have so fancy background images, but the topic is very interesting. We'll talk about implicit curves and surfaces, and partially today's lecture repeats the previous material. Before we go deeply into the theme, let us recall a few basic concepts. During all lectures, we discussed mathematical modeling of real-world objects. We focused on solid objects and consider only their geometry. To do so, we need to choose mathematical tools which can properly describe the object of our interest. And the last thing we want to learn how to do is a computer representation of mathematically modeled objects. Okay? For producing the computer representation, we need to specify objects we want to represent. I hope that all of you remember that we model three-dimensional solid bodies as point sets. There are two fundamental ways to represent a point set. The first one is enumerative and combinatorial representations. They specify the rules for generating points in the set and no other points. How does it work? Let us think how we can do so if we don't have a computer. For example, we can write down a list of all points belonging to the set. We can make a list of groups of points, for example, define sets of 3D blocks like Lego. We can describe an object by listing points with their neighborhoods. Already known parametric and explicit representations also belong to the class of enumerative representations. The second way how we can represent a point set is implicit and constructive representations. They give rules for testing which point belongs to the set and which is not. What does it mean? For example, we can define a b-unit square as all points with x and y coordinates belonging to the interval from minus 1 to 1. For any point, it can be tested if its coordinates are in the interval. Such rule is an example of implicit representation. One more example is CSG tree. We will talk about them in further lectures. Now we are going to learn more about implicit representation. It has a formal mathematical definition. To introduce an implicit representation, we need to consider a specific function which is not defined explicitly, but rather is defined in terms of algebraic relationship. We will call it an implicit function. In the implicit form, the points belonging to the object are given indirectly through a point membership classification function. Classification function here is an implicit function introduced before. Okay. What does it mean? It is easier to get the idea by an example. How can we define a circle in the origin with unit radius? Here is the formula x squared plus y squared equals 1. If we rewrite it in form x squared plus y squared minus 1 equals 0, we would define a point membership rule as follows. A point belongs to a set if its coordinates vanishes a function x squared plus y squared minus 1. Therefore, the function f of xy equals x squared plus y squared minus 1 is our implicit function or classification function. An example for the treaty case is represented at the bottom of this slide. Following by the same logic, we can define line and plane. If n equals n sub x, comma n sub y is a normal vector and p equals x y is an evaluated point, we can construct an implicit function f of x y is equal to n sub x times x plus n sub y times y minus d. This function equals zero at points of a straight line in two-dimensional space. Similarly, if n equals 
n sub x comma n sub y comma n sub z is a normal vector to the plane uh, p sub zero equals x sub zero comma y sub zero comma z sub zero is a point on the plane and p equals x y z is a position vector for an arbitrary point then f of p equals n times p minus n times p sub zero is an implicit function in a vector notation or f of x y z equals n sub x times x plus n sub y times y plus n sub z times z minus parenthesis n sub x times x sub zero plus n sub y times y sub zero plus n sub z times z sub zero parenthesis in coordinate notation. In this slide, you can see the already mentioned example with parametric form and implicit form for a circle. The second example provides us formulas for an ellipse. Here you can see examples for such 3D objects as a sphere and an ellipsoid. All examples given before were constructed from mathematical descriptions of algebraic curves and surfaces. Algebraic curve is the set of roots of an equation f of x, y equals zero, where f of x, y equals zero is a polynomial in x and y. Coefficients of the polynomial can be defined not only over a set of real numbers, but generally over any field k, exemplary gratia set of complex numbers. In this case, it is said that we have an algebraic curve over a field k. Similarly, algebraic surface is a set of roots of a polynomial. 2D and 3D point sets defined by a polynomial function are called algebraic curve and algebraic surface respectively. Algebraic curves and surfaces as such are formally studied since 19th century, but many facts were known before that. A degree of an algebraic curve is a number n, which is the maximum sum of powers of all terms with multiplication of x and y. A straight line has a degree of 1. An algebraic surface also has a degree. For example, a sphere has a degree of 2. Algebraic curves of a degree 2 have a special name. They are called quadratic curves. Widely used quadratic curves are conic sections. The conic sections are the curves generated by the intersections of a plane with a conical surface. Cones and conic sections are shown in the image. Their implicit functions are given at the left. Similarly, algebraic surfaces of a degree 2 are called quadratic surfaces. I think that you already got the point and now you understand how we can introduce cubic surfaces. You probably heard about the Möbius strip. Here you can see how to model it. One more example of a useful geometric object is a torus. Here you can see how it looks like and what is the function for its point classification. Torus belongs to a class of quartic surfaces. I think that you notify that this approach allows us to model quite complex and sophisticated objects. At the same time, there is a question. How can we operate with them? Implicit representation can be applied in computer graphics. Let us consider how to draw an implicit curve or surface. This process is called rendering in computer graphics. The fastest way to render an implicit object is a ray tracing. It works as follows. The main idea is find ray object intersections. First, we need to describe rays. It is done by a parametric form. Then, we need to substitute parametric x, y, z for the line to the implicit equation of the object. Fourth and fifth steps are solve the resulting equation for t, 
and get the resulting points by calculating the points on the line for resulting t's. The equation can be solved if it is quadratic, cubic or quartic. Here you can see how it works for 2D objects. The example is the ray tracing of a circle. You can see that after above mentioned steps, we obtain a quadratic equation with respect to a variable t. It can have 0, 1 or 2 roots, depending on the parameters. At the bottom of the slide you can see the algorithm for Dirk rendering of an algebraic curve. One more example of implicit objects is a blobby object. It rather describes not a solid, but non-rigid object. That is, things like cloth, rubber, liquids, water droplets, etc. There are several ways to define a geometry of such objects. One technique is to use a combination of Gaussian density functions or Gaussian bumps. Metaballs or blind blobbies are shown in this slide. And at the end we wanted to show you how blobby objects can be used in art. Thank you for the attention.